Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Bacon Creepy. Today we're going to show you how to start 7 Days to Die on the PC. Knaves game or a standard vanilla beginning. So, this is the unluckiest spawn ever. It spawned me right by the radiation zone. Now the radiation zone, for nobody that knows what it is, the radiation zone is the edges of the map and the way they keep you in the map is when you go in the radiation zone, it does massive damage to you every few seconds. So look, I was in there for one second, 70 damage out of my hundred. So never go in the radiation zone. It's it's um, on the edges of the map, the square that goes all the way around. It's, um, it's, uh, it's uh, well, it's radiation, exactly what it sounds like. So I know where I'm at in Knaves Gain. I'm way in the northern area, right in the kind of center of the north area, just because I played this game a whole bunch. And there's uh, a couple of good towns in this uh, in Knaves Game, and the town I'm going to, uh, it's where I like to always go because there's a lot of resources there. There's a really good base that I like to start off at, and all the other towns they all have something wrong with them. The one in the broken. It, uh, it always has dogs and, uh, and cops that shoot at you and blow up, and the, uh, the burn doesn't have any towns, and the nice beautiful green area, the only one in the sky is the one with the big hospital, that one constantly has dogs. So uh, I know where we're going to. Yeah, you can see right there, that red area, that's where the radiation zone was, and so I can either go, uh, let's see, I can go west or east, I'm going to go west because the town I'm looking for, it's in the northwest corner of everything, you'll see. Yeah, as you can see out here, you have a bit of a hard time finding rocks and wood as you would in other places. But once you get your stone axe going, like you see right here, it becomes a lot easier. So the kind of rocks you're really looking for are these round guys. These are gold. I like to call them land gold or dirt turds, gold nuggets. I don't care what I call them. No, really, seriously, uh, these these rocks right there, if you notice, they give you rock, they give you coal, they give you iron. Uh, on the bottom right, you can see they harvested a bunch of resource types. And so you want to get those ones because they give you a good amount of rock and then also other materials you're going to use. Now, the trees in, the, in this area, it's like a prairie area, they're not that good. They don't give you that much wood, and they give you coal with it, which is sort of useful. You can burn coal uh, like you would wood, but you can't turn it into things like frames and ladders and, and things like that. So it's only worth so much, you know what I mean? Keep your eye out for things like these backpacks. Backpacks carry I had food and a can in it. Uh, cars, each car has like a trunk, basically, that you can go and pick open. Uh, this car had nothing in it, but then, you know, there's this box next to it. You're going to find these little stations down the road where you're going to find two or three container types all sitting in the same area, and so you want to check those. Also check each of these trash bags. Those are three of those Duke tokens. You'll find out what they're used for later. They're used for, uh, they're cash for the, the, the traders in the game. There are these these traders in the game and um, they'll sell you weapons and things like that uh, and they'll only take a specific money type that's what you found right there keep in mind if you've if you played this game before I'm really kind of trying to um, do this video for uh, people who have uh, never really played before uh, the beginner you know someone who's just starting uh, I imagine there's a lot of people out there who uh, maybe have never played this game before maybe saw a video and just want to start or maybe might watch this video and think to myself that looks fun maybe they always thought this game was too hard can be hard but once you get it down it's not that hard make yourself on the way to town um, a stone shovel the stone shovel should be the same materials that the stone axe took it's going to take uh, some stone some plant fiber and some wood uh, but the reason we want a stone shovel is the faster you can get some clay and the faster you can get some uh, stone going the better because we're going to want to make a forge just ASAP forges are the best thing if you can get one on day one then you did really super well but if you can get one by uh, the morning of day two or day three, that's fine by me. So here we go. This is the town I was talking about. Perished in. It's in the upper left corner of the map. And uh, um, what I'm looking for right now is uh, there's clay around the edges of the city. There's probably some in the city too, but you can find them on the map. They're like a, like a brown circle, like right here. You can see that circle that I'm pointing at with the yellow arrow there. Yeah, those brown circles, you'll find them. And there's one uh, right up here. I always like to jump over the cars. It's just a, uh, I don't know why. It's just a, uh, it makes me feel safer. Like if there's a zombie following me, he has to go around it because they don't jump cars very well. And this right here, this will be the water source for Perishton. You can find other water sources by going south, but uh, right here you can find a water source. And just to our, our south by southwest on this hill is our first clay spot. And that's why I made that stone shovel. We need this, this, uh, we need the shovel to dig up this clay, and then we need the clay to, to make a forge. We need the clay to make a forge, so... And each time, you, you can tell, I'm a very paranoid player. You see, I'll take three swipes, four swipes, and then I gotta stop and I gotta look around like a meerkat. Anybody out there? No, I'm cool. 
And it, I learned this from Skyrim and Fallout 2. I will just duck every now and then just to see if my my crosshairs turn into a little squinty eye to make sure nobody's staring at me. You see me, I'll even look away from the object I'm swiping just so I can see the eyeball again. I'm a very paranoid, very paranoid player. Also make sure to grab as much wood as you can. Uh, wood is the lifeblood at the beginning of the game. You need it to build ladders, you need it to build wooden frames, you need it to uh, run your campfires, to run your forges as fuel. It's just, it's super essential, so uh, get yourself a good chunk of wood to start. Especially right now, because where I'm planning on going, you're going to want to bring some ladders with you. So uh, when you do start the game, make sure you make yourself a couple of ladders, like like maybe 10 or so, to begin. Because I'll show you why. The safest bases you can choose will be second stories of very strong brick buildings. There's a lot of them to choose in this town. The one that I enjoy, I think it's a city hall. The way it looks, it, it looks like a city hall. It's right across the street here. So these bricks are pretty good for the stone, because if you look, you get one stone every three hits, but then when you finish it off, you get yourself five extra bricks, basically. So um, those are pretty nice because they come out to like about ten stones or so after breaking it apart. So if you can't find any boulders around the town, don't forget those bricks. They're lying all over the street. They're good for a quick little bit of rocks if you just need a few more. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make those ladders right now and replace the wood with these trees because they're giving okay wood even though they look like junk but one for one thing further than that once you chop these trees out they give you a seed back you can plant that seed in the ground and it will make a brand new tree and the new tree will be a really big strong tree it'll be like a spruce or something like that it won't be one of these ugly little things so the faster you can kind of clear out the ugly trees around your neighborhood and then replant them the better always make sure that when they do uh when you do knock down a tree and it gives you an acorn or a pine cone or a seed that you do replant it so, uh, it's it's important you're gonna you're gonna hate yourself when you need wood and you're traveling really far because there's no trees near your house all right, so that's going to be our home base. I've used it many times before because it's one of my favorite, favorite buildings in Knave's game. You can go in through the bottom floor or go to this wall over here. It's specifically this one. There's a good reason for it. Put your ladders on, but start the ladders on the, the second block up. Never put your ladders on the bottom floor. Uh, that zombie proofs the, uh, the ladders. The zombies, they can't jump up to a second square. They just can't. All right, so you climb to the second floor. Pop out these windows. Windows are super weak. And if you look in here, there's a beautiful room just sitting here. And it's uh, it's pretty safe from the rest of the building. There is a ladder over here that goes down. But if you look really closely, it has two different spaces missing on the bottom. So if you go down, be ready to climb back up uh, by bringing some more ladders too. And there's also a couple of uh, just backpacks scattered throughout here. So those are also nice. That one had a, a wooden club in it. And this backpack... Oh, a military helmet and some uh, some rations. Those military helmets, they're, they're really strong gear. Okay, so now it's time to start doing our quests. In the top right corner, you see there's that craft bed roll. So that's why we picked up all of these, uh, these stupid plants. We picked up these stupid plants so that uh, we can craft that bed roll. And uh, the bed roll itself takes grass. We have plenty of it. Uh, once it's crafted and you put it inside your menu, place it down. Your bed roll, it's your respawn point. For any new people, it's a respawn point. That block right there I placed place down, uh, it's a land claim block, but really what it's for is for PvP, it's for multiplayer. Uh, the idea is if um, if there's other players out there, they can't build things within your zone, and that is like your, your claim, it's like your stake. So yeah, we're just going to pile through these uh, quests in the top right corner. It's, this one wants us to build these clothes. When you're building the clothes, make sure you don't accidentally hit hat. They don't actually want you to make the hat, they want you to make the hood. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally made the cowboy hat instead of making the hood when I'm trying to do this quest. So don't put the clothes on right away. Let them sit in your inventory until you fulfilled this step of the quest. But now you can put them on because the next quest is to put the stupid clothes on. So after you put the clothes on, the next quest is to build a wooden club. Wooden clubs are super easy. It's just wood. It's as easy as it sounds. I actually already have one that's nicer than uh, the one I can craft, but the game wants me to craft one, so let's go ahead and make one. So the wooden club, just type the word club in your crafting menu. You can click on the little hammer on the top center and then type the word club in the window, and that'll allow you to make it. After you have the club made, the game wants you to make a wooden bow. The wooden bow, again, it's just uh, wood and plant fibers. It's a very easy object to make, and it wants you to make at least two arrows um, so make as many as you want, honestly. Arrows are really useful, so in the beginning of the game, if you want to make a whole bunch of them, uh, feel free to, of course. Just make sure you're not using all your rocks and all of your wood, because you need to save a couple to repair your stone axe or 
anything you might not have thought of. After the arrows, the game wants you to make three wood frames. So while in the crafting menu, just type out wood space F. It'll bring wood frame up. Uh, wood frames only take wood. This is why you need to chop down all those trees on the way in here. Uh, so it wants you to make three wood frames and then it wants you to place three wood frames and then it wants you to upgrade three wood frames. And so what I'm gonna do with my wood frames is, do you remember that hole in the corner of the room that, that the ladder comes up? I'm just gonna cover it up for now. Wood frames are really weak and so this is mostly just so that if there are zombies down there, they don't they don't sense me. They there's a wall uh, blocking our line of sight. So they can't get up here, but this will just kind of I don't know, keep them from sensing me up here for for right now at least. And then the last of the quests is to build a campfire. Now the campfire is something you really do need. Uh, it only takes rocks to make it. It's a very 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 simple item. Uh, place it down in your hot bar, and then you place it on the ground somewhere. Don't place it on the ground ground. Try to raise it up off the ground. There's a really good reason why. There's been so many times that we've had our campfire on the ground cooking, and someone walks across it, and they catch on fire. It'll catch you on fire if it's cooking and you walk across it. So I'm going to raise it up on my land claim block uh, right next to my bed. Just just looks nice and tidy. And that's all the quests they want you to do for day one. The quests are uh, a part of every single one of these. They give you skill points, and they also reveal the location of the nearest trader. And so um, it's really kind of important to, to get through these at some point. So now that I've built um, the campfire, I also built a little storage chest, and I put that in the corner over here. And you're going to want to dump off really everything that you're not going to be using in the next few minutes. I don't know why I kept, kept the food. I mean, maybe I'm getting super hungry. And I'm going to go out and try to take advantage of the day. Because if you look, it's only 1.20 in the afternoon. And the nighttime when it comes, it's super dangerous and you don't want to be out there. And so I'm going to go out. I'm going to try to get a little more wood, a little more rock, and try to scavenge a couple of the areas of this town. Okay, and then uh, this is our building still. And behind the building, you see, we've got these great cars back here. I love cars. Cars can carry so much stuff. They have the trunk on the inside, of course, uh, which is, it's like any loot box. It's a random uh, luck assessment as to whether you're gonna uh, find anything. This one had a padlock in it. Uh, they all have different uh, levels of items. Uh, but the other great thing about uh, cars, that one had bullet casings. You use those to help create bullets. Is cars, once you get a wrench, you can start uh, hitting a car with a wrench and it'll rip it apart and it'll start giving you uh, lots of materials like pipes and and uh, electric parts, electric components, mechanical parts, uh, gas, uh, engines. It'll give you a lot of pieces that you otherwise uh, won't get if you hit a car. And so, um, yeah, so cars, you're gonna wanna, um, at first, just pick their trunks, but then after a while, you're gonna wanna uh, decide to wrench them apart so you can get the rest of the goodies that are inside. So this is the mechanics garage behind the house. And this is really lucky for the one reason that there's a working workbench on the inside. I gotta keep that in mind. Uh, workbenches are really hard to make. They take forever to make. And um, in on console, I know you console viewers are watching going right now saying, well, it's just wrench it apart. You can't, you can't. That only works on console and they're gonna take it away from you guys eventually. Uh, on our version, we have to build them from scratch. And so that being said, Workbench is a very high level item and having one this close to the house is very, very lucky. So whenever you do uh, start one of these games and you're playing on the PC and, you're, and you find uh, workable uh, chemistry stations or workbenches or forges, don't destroy them, take care of them. Uh, you can start building items faster than you're actually supposed to. Like I could probably build a mining helmet if I find that helmet and some tape and a flashlight, you know. I could build a few things ahead of time if I do that right, you know. So in here, spying through the window, what I see is I see um, those beverage coolers. That's great for uh, obviously beverages, things like honey and beer and water. I see those couches on the far end and I see her. So the couches give me leather. That's why I'm excited. I need leather, lots of it. We're trying to ultimately build a forge as fast as possible. And so we need leather so that uh, we can build the bellows. The You need leather for the bellows. Oh, my aim is off on bows and arrows. And each of these couches gives you leather. So whenever you see leather couches, chop them up using a stone axe like this. Just like you see me doing right here. Chop them up, chop them up, chop them up. They give me a little bit of wood too, which is really nice. Let's see what's on her. And then, uh, yeah, there's like, how many? They're like four or five. And each of them are giving me a couple of leather. So this is going to be worth about 15 leather or so. Get this last one. I can hear zombies out there a little bit, but that's okay. I mean, what am I going to do? Worry about it? And then always, you know, check every desk. That one gave me a shirt and some paper. 
Uh, I can put the shirt on because it's better than what I'm wearing right now. As you find clothes, you're going to want to put it on and trade it out. And then as you find dead zombies in the beginning, you're going to want to chop them up. And here's why, right? So when you chop up the zombies, they give you uh, rotten flesh, they give you fat, and they give you uh, bones. Sometimes they give you uh, hide also, but that's a little in infrequent. Um, once you get a bone from them, take the bone and then click on recipes. And under the bone recipes, uh, you'll find that they have a bone shiv, which will be your first knife. Your first knife is the bone shiv. And it's useful for when you have to, like, uh, I don't know, let's pretend you kill an animal and you want to cut it apart. It's good for that. These office chairs are good for leather. So, yeah, just keep checking everything. Never leave a box empty. Um, be prepared to throw things away if you have to, but always check everything. You never know when you're going to find a gun or some bullets or a really nice tool. Might find some armor or, oh, oh heaven help us, a, a mining helmet. That'd be best. I see a deer out there. Nice. Tagged him. Come back here. Come back here, deer. Tagged him. Oh, man. I'm not going to lie. That might have been some of my best arrow shooting in a while. <laughs> I'm not normally that lucky at it. So, yeah. Remember I was saying about the bone shiv? Click the bone. Hit mesh piece. Go to bone shiv. Craft one. I'll go and take it and put in your hot bar. I don't need that food in my hot bar. And start cutting this this deer apart. Now, if you notice, he's giving me hide. He's rolling. I hate when they do that. But he's giving me hide. He's giving me raw meat. He's giving me more bones. He's giving me fat. Uh, I can use them all for various things. I already know what I'm going to use them all for. So, uh, yeah. So, that was just really lucky. I, I didn't anticipate finding him. But now that I did, uh, that's exactly what I needed. And I believe that's all the leather that I need for the first half of the forge, which will be um, the bellows. And if you look over here, I crested the hill. There's the radiation zone, that sort of green area right past. See how it's in a natural green? The dirt itself is green, but there's nothing really growing. That's the radiation area. I'm really just uh, hitting this rock, getting some stones, and keep my eye on those zombies to the left and the right. I also see some corn up here, but I'm going to leave the corn for now. I'll just make a little mental note of it. Uh, corn is uh, obviously good for eating, but really what I want to save the, the vegetables for is... Uh, once we start uh, using agriculture, if we start fertilizing crops and growing crops, you're going to want to use a lot of corn, a lot of potatoes, a lot of mushrooms. And when when it happens, I'm not going to want to have to search the world for corn. I'm going to want to, ah, there's a couple up here, go grab and turn them in seeds real quick. So I'm just going to leave those guys right there for now. They're in no harm. Nobody else is in this world but me. So yeah, you can see that rock. It gave me, uh, let's see, it gave me uh, gunpowder and it gave me lead, it gave me nitrate, it gave me iron, it gave me rocks, it gave me a whole lot of everything. So those little round rocks, those are the ones you're always going to want to be using. And then behind this house, there's a small little burn area right here, very tiny. See, it's technically a burn area, but there's a lot of goodies in this one tiny area. You have a car here, I'm very lucky. There was wood and brass doorknob in there. There's a bag up here, a duffel bag. That's uh, electrical parts and, uh, and a scrap can. I have to start scrapping some items. Uh, so really what I'm doing is I'm scrapping items that I don't foresee myself using in the next little bit here. So I'm going to scrap down uh, like a, um, some of the smaller stuff, uh, bullet casings and junk like that. Things, turn them into raw materials. I'm going to drop other things that I don't feel I'm going to be using for crafting in a while, like paper. All right, so back to this uh, mechanics garage. There's a lot of cars here. So I'm going to go ahead and just start picking the cars apart. And as part of my paranoia... I'm going to play hot lava while I do it. I'm just going to stay on the cars. Because when a zombie attacks you and you're on a car, he has a chance of missing. He can't swing as far as you think. And so uh, it's kind of like a safe way of doing it to be on top of the car. Uh, I know it's it's paranoid. And a lot of people are like, dude, don't be, don't be such a pussy. But I don't know, man. I don't like getting hit in the game. I don't like dying. So if you don't like dying, I don't like dying. Let me teach you how to not die. So playing hot lava, the floor is lava. I'm just going to go from car to car and see what each one has. Wow, I can see this car from here. That's far. See that guy in the background, the twitcher? Ooh. So I just grabbed an iron axe. Very powerful. Uh, it does a lot of brick damage. And those are two um, gas barrels. Right now, the gas barrels are a little useless to me, but uh, in a little while, and very soon, because it's the kind of skill you learn early, I'm going to learn how to make gas cans out of it, and I'll be able to turn those barrels into about like 600 gas cans worth of fuel. So now that I'm home, I'm uh, dropping everything off again. 
let's drop off everything we can. You don't want to carry uh, a lot of things because you're going to want the ability to to loot as much as possible when you do go out. And now that it's getting late in the day, I'm going to try to go out and see if I can't get just a couple more things before the end of the day and then come home and count my blessings. There's a ton of good stores on the street. There's a Papa Pills. There's a Shotgun Messiah. There's a Working Stiff Tools. Those are the three big ones. Uh, Papa Pills will give you uh, pharmacy items, first aid kits, antibiotics, things like that, bandages. This is the Shock and Messiah. The Shock and Messiah, it's a gun store, so you can find ammo, weapons are more frequent to be in here. Uh, sometimes it's just gun parts, especially earlier in the game. They don't like giving you guns in the beginning. But, um, but this is the Shock and Messiah, and you can see that guy asleep right there. If you're ever going to sneak a shot on a guy, always crouch first. You get uh, triple bonus damage for for the sneak shot. You see that? So now I'm in here. Let's go and raid these guys. He's got nothing on him. He's got some money. That's handy. Money's nice. Uh, you have to trade it to the traders for tokens and then give them the tokens back for more goods, but it's still money. <laughs> And so whenever you see these boxes like that, they have that design inside, you have to hammer them open or axe them open. I have another one in the corner over there. The zombie, the zombie noises in here, they, they can make you a little paranoid, but until you hear that wood breaking or that metal breaking, you know they're just smacking things. So let's go and knock this open. I like to put my back to walls. Again, paranoid player. Because if anything came at me, I can run straight out and then to the right or left and dodge at least, you know? Always keep your eye where the door is, too. Never let them corner you. Never let them corner you. Uh, I heard them in there. There's a little bit too many. We're going to go across the street and see what's over here at the working stiff. Now, the working stiff is really helpful because in the working stiff, you're going to find uh, construction tools. You'll find axes. You can find hammers, uh, nail guns. Sometimes you find things even advanced as augers or chainsaws and, uh, and, and the parts to make them. And then you'll also find simple construction items like maybe a rebar or uh, uh, stuff like that. Now this one, got him in here. Anybody else in here? What's he got on him? He had, he had, uh, he had shoes and a shirt. Now I tagged her with the with the headshot, and triple damage, but look, she's a she's a runner. Okay, I gotta get out of here. Uh, never, don't, don't bother being a hero. On day one like this, when you see a runner, which is really weird, if you ever see a, day, a runner day one or a runner ever, just get out of here. That's a cracker book behind me. Wow, that's awesome. This street has everything. Wow, what a nice street. There you go. So whenever you knock them down, if they fall, stand above their head. Not on the body, but above their head. So you're facing the top of their head and hit them with a club. That'll usually destroy their head, and, and, and they'll usually destroy their head. There's a lot of times that when you stand over the body and you aim at the head, for some reason it kind of clunks them in the chest and doesn't kill them, but the part where you stand like above their shoulders, that will clear them out. That'll, that'll knock them head out, or at least just uh, finish them off. Now, I notice you see me grabbing chairs. Chairs are awesome. Now, why are chairs awesome? Here's why chairs are awesome. Like, one chair gives you like four minutes of fuel or something like that. It gives you like a lot of fuel. A lot of fuel. Okay, so we're going to head back up um, to the base. Ooh, that Bertha is close. See that? I don't think she saw me. Hold on, did she see me? Let's duck. Yeah, I'm undetected. I got lucky there. I, I mean, she would just smack my building for a while, and that's that's all, but, uh, you know, you don't want that. You don't want that noise. Okay, so this base we're on is pretty high up, which, here's one cool thing. We're almost the same height as the building next to us. And it's pretty close, too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a couple of ladders. I'm going to kind of hang it on the edge of their, their side here. This is a risky move, because ladders will sometimes drop you. I shouldn't do this, but I'm a wild man. So there's a backpack up here. Always check every backpack. And that's why. Look at that. A hunting rifle and the ammo to go with it. Beautiful. Uh oh. Hello, Bertha. Oh, that's my first wasted shot. Let's get out of her way. Otherwise, she's going to start smacking me. Oh, she's, she's flipping out. All right. Well, I'll aim low so I don't miss. Come on. 
Oh, she's gonna eat up all my bullets. Fine feathered friend. You know, as soon as I did that, I thought to myself, I should have probably used a club. So both these guys are dead. Never trust them when they just go down. It's not as amazing thing. <laughs> All right, so this room it's it's pretty empty, but there are zombies that can detect me right outside the door. So let's go ahead and see what's inside here. Oh, they're gonna get through there. See what's in there? Nothing. Uh oh. Uh oh. Alright, time to go. So take a jump. Alright. And then this is why I chose this building. Look, you can just jump right across. Just take a jump. They can't make it. In fact, watch what happens when they try to make it. Uh, they're dumb this way. Watch. See? She's like, oh, there she goes. There she goes. Okay, so. Let's go explore our base then. I'm going to chop out this middle uh, box. So I'm going to go down. But if you remember, there was a ladder issue on the bottom. It was missing several pieces on the bottom. But there's actually a bigger issue on its uh, home skillet right there. So let's see if you can't take him out from here. Shot to the back of the, back of the neck. Oh, he's got a one more time. Bam. Die, you punk zombie. Ugh. So you can see that it's missing a few ladder spots on the bottom. It's missing three ladder spots. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, place a ladder there, and I'm going to hop on down. That door's closed. Ooh, but that one's wide. Right, let's get this done. He had a couple of clothing items on there. Leather boots. Oh, I'm pretty full at the moment. I'm going to scrap down some of these items. Like things like gun parts in the beginning. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I don't save them. I scrap them down. They um, they take up space, and the skill you'll need to ever use them is going to take so long. By the time you get it, you're just going to have a bunch of guns anyways. So I normally don't save gun parts. So I am running out of time before this night ends. So I'm going to quickly run across street... Uh, check around the edges of the passing gas here. Ah, it's a little infested in there. See, it's so late at night and I'm so weak still. On the first day, don't try to try not to fight if you can. Oh, that's a level one steel pickaxe. I don't care that it's level one, it's steel. Yeah, try not to fight at all on day one if you can. I mean, we're trying to survive. Um, we'll start fighting more and more things time goes on. Of course, fight things if you have to, but uh, while you're weak and while your weapons are weak, uh, fight or flight, take flight. So back here, there's a dumpster. I see a couple of gas barrels. I see a zombie next to that gas barrel over there, so we're not going to go after her at all. There's a ladder that goes to the roof, but again, there's that zombie over there. Uh, we'll fight them a little bit later. Um, my goal right now is not to be fighting zombies. It's really just to try to uh, see if I can't get a couple of uh, iron pipes so that we can uh, at least get the bellows going tonight. So a good place to check for bellows are houses. Every house has a toilet, and every toilet is a short iron pipe, and the bellows we're trying to make uh, requires one. So uh, that's exactly why I came in here, in this room right here. Bam. Bam. I gotta make room. It accidentally fell on the floor because I was full, but there we go. Short iron pipe right there. Now, these other items in here, we'll give them to you if you have a wrench. I do not have a wrench. Okay, night is almost here. We used most of our time. If you look, I only have uh, 10 seconds before it's supposed to fire off. And so um, we're gonna go home. We're gonna climb this ladder back up to our base. We're gonna start unloading our items. Try to get up without anybody noticing because you don't want them smacking your thing all night long. It just gets annoying. I'm going to stick my torch on the wall. The torches are easy to stick on the wall. You just uh, left trigger it. I found some cooking grills while I was out there. Cooking grills go for the campfire. And if you look, those couple of uh, chairs made that much cooking time. It's amazing. And I can now make a bellows. The bellows is the, uh, the first part of a forge. The rest of the forge will be uh, some rocks, some clay, and another iron pipe. If I had found a second iron pipe today then we would be having a forge right now, but we'll just have to make one first thing in the morning. 
Uh, that deer that I killed earlier, we can now cook his meat. We can eat his meat. Yes. And while I'm here, it's a good idea to make a storage chest and put it near your campfire. And then fill that storage chest up with, with just food items. Fill it with just food items. Yeah, put all of your uh, food, your water, uh, the raw food materials like eggs. If you have any um, medical stuff, uh, first aid kits or, or extra pills. Um, one of those chests is usually just the right size to kind of keep all of it. So we have our bellows made. Uh, you can see that in our hotbar right there. We, um, we've really pretty much have done everything we could do for the evening. And so now that it's nighttime, uh, you can go and you can explore your building if you want. Uh, this part is up to you. I don't recommend this for the faint of heart. You feel you're a strong player. You can go explore your building beneath. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of that. So grab our torch and let's go on down. So now that I'm down here, I'm going to get a couple of uh, wood frames because I remember these doors are open. So if there's a zombie in the next room, he can see me. Now, I know he can bust through my wood frames really quickly, but I don't want him to see me in the first place. So I'm going to be putting the wood frames in the doors like that. You see that? And that'll let me look through them, and they can't see back in. Nobody's right there, so we're safe. But let's just be safe and put those right there. There we go. See, I can look through there. They can't see in. I can look through the other one. They can't see in. And so this uh, gives me just a little bit of safety while I'm in here. Uh, I know it's dark. I apologize. It's hard to, to walk around with a stone axe out. Now, the second floor of this, there is this staircase that comes up the middle right here. If you can get rid of the staircase then this whole place is yours and you're safe and secure. Up here, you'll find uh, some more leather couches. You'll find some chairs, a couple of desks. There's a leather duster and there's probably some paper. Yeah, some paper in here. Uh, you can see that um, it's just your basic kind of an office layout. So the things to loot inside this building really aren't that significant. But since you're here, it's nighttime. Uh, no zombies have spawned down here. We got a little lucky with that. And so I might as well. There's another couch that's worth uh, a little more leather. So, um, this concludes day one of my series. I will be doing day two on how to start on the PC of Vanilla Names game. And if you have any beginners that this series helps or have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments section. I do my best to answer every single question whenever I can. But other than that, though, make sure you're hitting like while you're here. My channel really enjoys the likes. And, of course, make sure you're subscribing to the channel. And while you're subscribing, don't forget the notification bell so you don't miss out on future live streams. But to everybody, thank you for joining, and happy hunting. I'll see you in the next episode.